Alzheimer's disease often have behavior problems in the late afternoon and evening hours. This is something commonly called sundowning. Your resident may appear more suspicious, agitated, confused, or disoriented. You may see the resident pace more. Your job as a care provider is to provide a calm environment and appropriate activities to minimize these behaviors as much as possible. Sundowning can be described as a behavioral problem most frequently seen in Alzheimer's disease. Commonly occurring in late afternoon or early evening, you may know changes in your resident's behaviors. You may notice some changes in your residents, such as an increased agitation. Residents may become more confused during the evening time. They may exhibit exit-seeking behavior, trying to leave, wanting to go home. They may become restless and fidgety. During this video, you are going to see actual residents living in residential care communities. You're going to see how staff interact with them. You're going to pick up some good ideas today for care techniques that you can use this afternoon should sundowning begin in your care community. You might wish to take notes during the course of this video. Feel free to pause, rewind, and listen to a section again. At the conclusion of this video, we'll review some essential points. Before we talk about sundowners, let's review a little bit about Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia. Symptoms include deficits in memory, language, reasoning and judgment, concentration, visual spatial orientation. We realize that when you have the dementia, part of your brain is saying, I can't do this, but another part of your brain realizes that you can. Experts are unsure of exactly why these behaviors occur, but there are some theories. The person with Alzheimer's disease may have increased difficulty in seeing as the light dims, this may cause increased confusion because familiar objects look differently in the dim light. Commonplace items and objects in the environment may look different to the resident. The resident may have a problem with their biological clock and have difficulty distinguishing daytime from nighttime. The resident may become tired at the end of the day and have more difficulty coping with stress. Many communities have several activities going on during the main part of the day. If, however, there are not sufficient activities in the evening hours as well, some residents become restless and agitated, unsure of what to do. We have to remember that um, Alzheimer's is a, or dementia is, um, they need to be busy, they need to keep busy. And uh, we try to different activities for them to occupy their minds. Sometimes caregivers become fatigued towards the end of the day. And we're actually communicating that stress and fatigue to our residents that feel uncomfortable with the messages that we're sending to them. What we have to realize is that because of the brain dysfunction and the limitations due to Alzheimer's disease, most of the behaviors our resident exhibit are not purposeful. They can't always help why they behave in certain ways. The best way to manage is to plan and make sure that we provide opportunities for outlets with things for the resident to do that can reduce the stimuli that causes sundowner syndrome. When caring for a resident with sundowning syndrome or any behavior concern, we always want to make sure we're employing our good fundamental basic dementia care techniques. Remember to always approach the resident in a calm, friendly manner. Now basically we, we want people to be positive about their approach, 
uh, to uh, uh, redirect uh, constantly into uh, behavior that is safe uh, and, uh, and to be kind. Make sure to never rush the resident in their activities. Allow the resident as much as is safe and feasible to select and participate in the activities of their choice. Don't violate a resident's personal space. While some residents very much appreciate a friendly gesture, a hug, a pat on the hand, for some residents that can actually be agitating. We must always know our residents as the individuals that they are. Know their preferences. Know what works for that resident. Those are just fundamental techniques we always want to employ when providing good resident care. Getting to know the resident, um, you know, protecting their privacy, you know, closing the door and, you know, helping them, assist them and uh, let them do as much as they can do for themselves. Um, I see that works much better, you know. Some of my residents, you know, have a hard time having somebody in there to uh, help them, so. The biggest challenge for the caregiver is in knowing what to do. Let's look at some fundamental basics and then in just a few minutes we're going to get into some actual interventions for sundowning. Now one of the first things we want to make sure of is that our residents are active enough during the day. A resident that is in the recliner for several hours, dozing, napping, maybe lying down on their bed for most of the afternoon, is a resident that may become restless in the evening simply because they slept the day away. My resident has had ample activities and meaningful programs to participate throughout the day. At the time of 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's also good to make sure I know my resident so that I can make the judgment whether a resident needs to have an energy outlet, such as walking in the garden or doing something that they may enjoy, such as dancing, or if they need perhaps to be quiet and listen to some music or some poetry. I think one of the things that is very important is that we make sure that each of our residents has opportunities to be involved so as to avoid sundowning altogether. Sometimes you'll note if one resident begins to sundown, you'll have other residents quickly follow. The best method to manage this is to plan for this and plan an appropriate activity that would hopefully reduce any noise and stimuli in the environment to reduce the, the possibility of sundowning. We'll want to make sure we're monitoring our residents' diet. We want to make sure that the resident's not going to bed hungry or thirsty. Sometimes they may be in and out of bed and uncomfortable simply because they haven't had enough to eat prior to the evening hours. And they do tend to get up maybe in the middle of the night and get a snack or have a snack. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that, I guess, depending on what the snack is. But uh, maybe a glass of milk and a cookie and then they can sit there and read. Don't be afraid to seek medical advice. There may be a physiological cause for your resident to become very restless and agitated. It could be something like bladder irritation from a urinary tract infection. It could be pain they're experiencing when they're lying down. So again, although the interventions we discuss are good overall interventions for sundowning, we want to make sure we've ruled out any physiological problems our resident may have as well. You'll also want to rule out any environmental causes for what may appear to be sundowning-like symptoms. For example, maybe your resident is having a problem with his roommate that's actually causing agitation, and yet it's manifesting itself like a sundowning syndrome. If we remember that residents can no longer sort out their cues from the environment due to confusion and disorientation, it's helpful to realize they may need a little extra hand during this time. Additionally, you'll want to make sure that the minimal comforts of the room are in place. How's the temperature of the room? Is the bed going to be comfortable for the evening? We also have to remember that keeping rooms free of clutter is helpful for a resident when they are disoriented and have increased agitation during sundowning. Make sure the rooms are neat, all pathways are clear, and again, that the lights are on.
best thing a caregiver can do if they're noting increased agitation and possible sundowners behavior in one resident or many residents is to seize the opportunity to do a meaningful activity with the resident. Depending on the resident's needs and knowing your resident's needs first, it's always best to plan. Have ready a few simple things. While there are many activities that can help manage sundowner syndrome, a few simple things that may work. Music. The best would be the music that the resident favors, but what has been noted as being successful is soft, calming music such as Mozart. What we'll do is put music on. Music is a very, very good therapy for, I think, any type of dementia. Um, having them put some music on so they can dance. That's, I've, I've seen that happen more than a few times where we've put the music on and get them all out and start dancing. And Although we're not offering a therapeutic massage, massage has been noted to sometimes calm a resident who may be having increased agitation during sundowning. What a caregiver may do is sit themselves next to a resident in a common area. While the resident is fully clothed, ask the resident permission that they can place their hands on the resident's shoulders and simply offer a rub or a gentle massage. Aromatherapy has also been noted to be calm and soothing for residents who may have increased agitation and noted to be affiliated with sundowner syndrome. You can purchase simple oils of essence from your bath shops located in your nearby malls. Calming scents include lavender and also check with the shopkeeper for some helpful hints. Repetitive activities. Sharing a favorite food or beverage. Warm milk can often be soothing for a resident. Taking a walk. Reminiscence means looking back, allowing the resident to talk about their past experiences. When a resident and caregiver engage in a reminiscent conversation, one wants to focus on pleasant and comforting talks. Some pleasant conversations during these evening hours may include what residents may have done to prepare dinner for their family. What kinds of things they'd like to do before, when tucking their children into bed? What was their bedroom like as a child? What kind of nighttime prayers they may have said before bedtime? Petting a pet. At your local store, you'll be able to find songs of nature, babbling brooks, mountain fresh air breezes, and bird song. Singing hymns gently brushing hair, a calming movie, or reading a favorite story. Some of our residents respond real favorably to children's stories and poems which are very soothing. For agitation, um, it's not so much as uh, a busy activity, it's more um, of taking them aside and taking them away from the area. What has really worked in the past for me is, is uh, walking them out here. And as you can see back here, we have different water fountains and, and different um, sounds and stuff, and they're very soothing. We, we sit in front of the, the little brook right here and um, we close our eyes and I tell them close your eyes and listen to the water running and, and that really, really helps them to calm down. Um, as far as other activities, I, I think the best thing is really to take them away from the situation, away from people and away from the rest of the residents because I think that adds to the agitation. So um, if it's just even going into a room with music, with soothing music, or going outside and going for a walk and talking very calmly. In general, we try to isolate them at the, at the moment that an incident is occurring uh, and to just calmly talk, uh, be quiet. If uh, there isn't good interaction, then we ask that 
caregiver to move away and we bring a different caregiver in to attempt to redirect once again into behavior that is uh, less combative. Uh, we think it's unique in that the model is so particular to the needs of uh, the Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's and dementia people at this time. It's honed down into very small groups so that the interaction with the caregivers uh, and the residents is, uh, uh, is easy. There are no wayfinding issues We've gone to great extents to make sure that it's easy to find your way simply from your room to the dining area, the social areas. They're all combined into one area, so there is really uh, no choice. You open the door, it's easy to find where you're going. You can see, you can hear the sounds of people, uh, of uh, the, uh, the breakfast being made. You can smell the coffee, you can smell the bacon, so you have olfactory type cues that happen. There are color cues for uh, 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 wayfinding. Uh, there are uh, shape cues. You can find your room because the shape of the door is different for each resident. All of these little uh, design factors help. We know what they're capable of doing, so we have to, I have to decide what kind of activities are, are going to be, um, they won't get so frustrated at. Um, we have one side that will be able to do um, more intricate things. We have another side that doesn't, so we keep them at a low, um, no fail type of activities where we're not having, for example, and you'll probably see this, um, we take out the paints and the, and the paint brushes and, and the paper and instead of telling them to draw a picture of something, we tell them just paint something. It doesn't matter what it is because it's going to be beautiful and it, whatever you have in your heart or whatever you see outside or whatever you feel, put it on the paper instead of having them to do a different craft or a different um, piece of art. You've learned some great techniques and activity ideas when providing resident care. I'd like to talk to you about a particular resident, Charlie. Charlie is just a fabulous guy to have in the facility. He's fun-loving, he's outgoing, he's friendly, he eats well, loves food, loves to go on outings. He is the first one on that facility van ready to take off if we're going on an outing. Charlie interacts beautifully with other residents. When family members come to visit, he's friendly, he invites them to sit down, he's just a very pleasant, pleasant gentleman. However, Many times, come 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, Charlie turns into a very different individual. That same pleasant Charlie will sometimes verbally attack another resident that's just coming up to chat. Charlie will, you can actually see a physical change in him. He starts wringing his hands and he looks very anxious and he begins pacing, uh, not interested in any late evening snacks, he's, he's very concerned, often thinks he's got to get on the bus. Sometimes Charlie becomes suspicious. The same care providers that he was interacting with beautifully a few hours before, he suddenly starts to think they may cause harm to him. What are you doing that to me for, he'll say. Get away, go on, leave me alone. You'll see sometimes Charlie will just shut his door and, and not want anyone to come in, and then two minutes later he's opening the door and ready to, to head outside, even though it's dark and cold outside by that point. What would you do if Charlie were your resident? Think about that for just a moment and discuss some ideas. The best thing you can do if you're noticing that Charlie begins increased agitation during hours is to plan for it. Approach Charlie a few minutes before his routine time of sundowning. Invite him to join you in the garden, listening to the birds, pointing out things of interest, natural things of interest, and the babbling brook that's running in the back, which has always been a favorite of Charlie's. When you re-enter your facility, it may be wise to bring him to some boxes that have already been prepared with things he may like and enjoy to rummage through, 
or perhaps items of interest that are kept in a nearby drawer. This personal attention to Charlie will maintain his calmness, provide him reassurance because you're providing one-to-one -one attention, and then it may be a good time to reintroduce to the community setting. It's true, sundowning can be a challenge for our caregivers, but we must always remember that with planning, it's a manageable behavior. This is what second nature for me is, is the caring and loving for these residents, um, for those that can't care for themselves and some that can. You know, I just feel that it's real important to uh, have uh, somebody who can love them and care for them. And, you know, this is just a big family for me. I look forward to coming every day. You really do make a difference in your residents' lives. The techniques that you learn each and every day, the care that you provide, your approach with a resident really does have a very significant impact on the quality of life each resident is able to experience under your care. Much success to you as you care for your residents with sundowning syndrome.